Scenario. A two-day-old term infant is brought to the clinic by her parents for evaluation of jaundice. The parents report that the baby's skin and eyes have become progressively more yellow since birth. The baby was born at 39 weeks gestation via normal vaginal delivery. On examination, the baby is alert, feeding well, and has jaundiced skin and sclerae. There are no signs of distress. What is the most likely cause of this jaundice? A. Physiological jaundice B. Hemolytic anemia C. Biliary atresia D. Breast milk jaundice E. G6PD deficiency answer. C. Biliary atresia explanation. Physiological jaundice is common in newborns, but it usually presents after the first 24 hours of life, not within the first few days. Hemolytic anemia can cause jaundice, but it typically presents earlier and is associated with pallor and hepatosplenomegaly. Biliary atresia presents with jaundice within the first 2-3 weeks of life, and it's a surgical emergency. Scenario. A 3-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department with a history of sudden-onset respiratory distress. On examination, he is tachypneic, using accessory muscles for breathing, and has wheezing on auscultation. His oxygen saturation is 89% on room air. His parents report a previous history of intermittent cough and wheezing. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Acute bronchiolitis B. Asthma exacerbation C. Pneumonia D. Foreign body aspiration E. Cystic fibrosis answer. D. Foreign body aspiration explanation. While asthma exacerbation is a common cause of wheezing in children, the sudden onset of respiratory distress with a known history of intermittent cough and wheezing should raise suspicion for foreign body aspiration. Acute bronchiolitis typically presents with viral symptoms and is less likely in a 3-year-old. Pneumonia may present with wheezing, but it's less likely to cause sudden onset respiratory distress. Cystic fibrosis typically presents later in childhood. Scenario a previously healthy 18-month-old boy presents to the emergency department with a seizure. His mother reports that he had a fever for the past two days. The seizure lasted for five minutes and was generalized. On examination, the child is afebrile and appears well. What is the most appropriate next step? A. Start antiepileptic medication B. Perform a lumbar puncture C. Order a brain MRID discharge with follow-up E. Administer intravenous antibiotics answer. D. Discharge with follow-up explanation. This scenario is consistent with a febrile seizure, which is a common occurrence in young children during a fever. Febrile seizures are typically brief and do not require antiepileptic medication, lumbar puncture, or brain MRI. The child should be discharged with instructions for the family to follow up with their pediatrician. Scenario. A six-month-old infant is brought to the emergency department with multiple bruises on various parts of the body. The mother reports that the baby fell off the changing table a few times. On examination, the bruises are in different stages of healing, and there is retinal hemorrhage. What is the most appropriate next step? A. Discharge with parental education B. Order a skeletal survey C. Contact Child Protective Services D. Refer for ophthalmology consultation E. Admit to the pediatric ward answer. C. Contact Child Protective Services explanation. This scenario raises suspicion of child abuse, particularly given the multiple bruises in different stages of healing and retinal hemorrhage. The most appropriate next step is to contact Child Protective Services to investigate further. Discharging the child with parental education is not appropriate in this case. Scenario. A two-year-old boy is brought to the pediatrician by his parents due to concerns about developmental delay. They report that he has not yet started talking and is unable to make eye contact. On examination, the child avoids eye contact, flaps his hands, and does not respond to his name being called. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Autism Spectrum Disorder B. Expressive Language Disorder C. Global Developmental Delay D. Intellectual Disability E. Childhood Schizophrenia Answer. A Autism Spectrum Disorder Explanation. This child's lack of speech, avoidance of eye contact, and repetitive behaviors are indicative of Autism Spectrum Disorder. Autism typically presents with social and communication deficits, as well as repetitive and restrictive behaviors. The other options do not fully capture the clinical picture.
Scenario. A five-year-old boy presents with pallor, fatigue, and easy bruising for the past few weeks. Physical examination reveals petechia and ecchymosis. Laboratory tests show a low hemoglobin, low platelet count, and increased blast cells in the peripheral blood smear. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Iron deficiency anemia B. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, all, C. Immune thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP, D. Aplastic anemia E. Hemophilia A answer. B. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, all, explanation. This child's presentation with fatigue, bruising, and blast cells in the peripheral blood smear is highly suggestive of all, which is the most common childhood leukemia. The other conditions mentioned may have similar symptoms but do not typically present with blast cells in the peripheral blood. Scenario. A three-year-old girl presents with a two-day history of profuse, watery diarrhea and vomiting. She appears lethargic and has sunken eyes, dry mucous membranes, and poor skin turgor. Her heart rate is 160 beats per minute, and her blood pressure is 80 fiftieths of a millimeter of mercury. What is the most appropriate initial management? A. Intravenous, IV, rehydration with normal saline B. Oral rehydration solution, ORS, C. Empiric antibiotics D. Stool culture and sensitivity E. Antiemetic medication answer. A. Intravenous, IV, rehydration with normal saline explanation. This child presents with severe dehydration and should be managed with IV rehydration using normal saline. Oral rehydration solution, ORS, may be used for mild to moderate dehydration, but in this case, IV rehydration is necessary. Empiric antibiotics are not indicated unless there is evidence of bacterial infection. Stool culture and sensitivity can be considered later if necessary. Antiemetic medication is not the initial priority.